Hello students, welcome to the Scott Lab here at McMaster University where researchers study how vertebrates like mammals, fish, and birds adjust to challenging environments and how they adapt over evolutionary time. It is pretty cool to note that this lab incorporates both lab work done here on campus as well as field work in different regions around the world. So Dr. Scott, can you tell us a little more about your lab? Most of what we do is aimed at understanding how uh, different types of animals can cope with low oxygen conditions in their environment. So um, humans, of course, suffer uh, oxygen limitation in cells in a variety of situations, like during heart attacks, uh, stroke, emphysema, lots of different situations are associated with, with um, the cells in their body not having enough oxygen. And so what we would like to do is try and understand how animals that live in environments with low oxygen um, are able to cope with those conditions, what makes them special, what allows them to do things that we can't do, and in that way provide some unique perspectives into, um, into the limitations that we ourselves face. Before looking at the research taking place in the Scott Lab, let's go over a couple of concepts. Hypoxia is the reduction in oxygen supply to the tissues in the body. Acclimatization is the process in which organisms adjust to a gradual change in their environment, such as change in altitude. Let's now take a closer look at Dr. Scott's laboratory with Katie, a master's student who works with deer mice. Katie and the other researchers in the lab study deer mice at the cellular level, tissue level, and also look at the, the organism as a whole. Katie will now explain what she studies at each level and explain some techniques used during the study. So in our lab, we can also look at the cellular responses, so more organelle-based. So this is the Ouroboros, and this measures mitochondrial respiration, so how much oxygen the mitochondria consumes to produce ATP. And so what you guys read out then on the screen that tells you, oh, this is what your oxygen consumption is, um, and these are the different responses that you're seeing every time that you inject into the Ouroboros. Here we have the Hemox, which looks at how well oxygen binds to your red blood cells. So different organisms, be them in high altitude or low altitude or in a hypoxic environment, might have different adaptations to cause oxygen to bind tighter or looser, depending on, again, where you are. Um, so here the machine will suck up your sample, and then what it'll do is it'll give it different amounts of oxygen, and it'll create this oxygen equilibrium curve. So you'll be able to see that with really small amounts of oxygen, you might find that binding is really minimal, but when you get more increasing amounts of oxygen, obviously more oxygen is bound to the red blood cells. Okay, so we can also look at tissue level responses. Um, so you may be wondering, okay, is there more capillaries or are there more oxidative fibers? Um, in your sample, depending on, again, if it's been acclimated to high altitude or low altitude or an hypoxic environment. And so here we have the cryostat, and what it is is it's like a meat slicer. So you put your sample in on the middle mounting block, and then all you do is you slice away sections and you put them onto a slide. So you have then a slide of your sample, and you can stain it to see different responses. Again, you can stain for capillaries, you can stain using fluorescent dyes so that it shows up bright, fun colors, or you can stain for just like red or dark spots. So from our project, I'm interested in looking at the breathing response to low oxygen in our mice. And so from my experiment, I put my mice into a central chamber, and what I do is I flow different mixed gases through. So I have nitrogen and oxygen and CO2, and I can com change the composition of the air that gets flown into the chamber. So I start at 21%, which is 
room conditions, and then I go down to 12%, which is the value that's found on top of the mountain that our mice are from. So what I would do is I would put a mice into the chamber, and so while it's in the chamber, I would throw flow the different compositions through, and from this, I have a pressure transducer, which allows me to look at breathing uh, frequency and breathing pattern. And also coming from this, I have an outflow so I can measure oxygen consumption and CO2 production. And so when we look at the computer output, what we can see is its breathing pattern. So there's going to be points where it's going to be still, and you'll get a nice calm breathing trace. But then when it starts moving around, that's when you get a more crazy breathing trace. Apart from studying in a lab setting, members of Dr. Scott's laboratory also engage in field work. Let's see what Dr. Scott has to say about the fieldwork component. I've myself gone to Mongolia to study um, bar-headed geese. They're a species of goose that, they're the ones that migrate over the Himalayas. We'd catch the birds and then put little backpacks on them and implant small data logging devices that could measure their, uh, their physiology. Then we let them go and um, get data, have them collect data and log data on these devices. Um, but they're just freely behaving. As you guys saw, Dr. Scott's lab is a very active environment, integrating both lab and fieldwork components. Thanks for watching!